fabulous trip, vacation, a car, and a whole mess of prizes. You do this when you get a haircut? I got a trim today, and I've been going like this. Ever I got a guess. Barbers have never like solved this problem, you know what? Of when they trim your hair, what to do about the hair that goes down that way? So if I stand like this today, it's not nerves. I got a haircut. Something occurred to me. When one barber gets his hair cut by another barber, who does the talking? <laughs> I don't know how they work that out. Bill, who's... It doesn't require anything. Bill, who's first to try... Johnny from New York City. Yes. A fencing master leads off today with his wife, Terry, meet Odon Peter Kirchner. How are you? pretty well on that last name, didn't he, Odon? Yes. Nieder Kirchner. Oh, right? Nieder Kirchner. Nieder Kirchner. Sure. No Kirchner. <laughs> do you have any, do you have, do you have a family? Sure. How many, how many children do you have? Yes, I have a big married boy and I have a little son, 11 oh, year old. 11 year old and one son? Yes. Married, huh? Yes. Hey, wonderful. Yes. The George is in Germany. He's married there. Is that and my daughter is an excellent American. Hey, excellent. Odin, oh, I understand that you're a, Bill said you're a fencing master. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Exactly what does a fencing master do? Oh, I teach people to fence. Foil, uh -huh. AP, saber. Uh -huh. what, do you, what, what do you teach this? Oh, for the living. Oh, I see. I mean, where? Where do you, where do you teach this? In the New York Athletic Club. But you know that in the, in the old day, yeah. a knight, you know, he put his sword at the service of a king, you know? And I put my service today at the New York Athletic Club. Is that right? I teach that. How long have you been teaching fencing? For 30 years. Ah. How many, what kind of people? Oh, everybody can fence. Is that right? Sure, everybody. Children. Men. Especially women. Women? You ah, exactly. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. That comes in handy on the subway. Oh, oh, imagine. oh yes, yes, yes. 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 Can it, you say anyone can be taught to fence? Sure. But it is different, you know. Uh -huh. You know, you... Somebody can be a very good fencer, are they a bad fencer, you know? It's it is a big difference between the good and bad fencer, you know? I suppose the difference is that the bad fencer is dead, huh? Oh, no! No! <laughs> no. What is the... Just he's a bad fencer, you know? The good fencer, it moves like a cat. Moves like the a cat. bad fencer moves like a dog. Look, I shall. All right. Good fencer. Yeah, ah, 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 boom! You see? They move, move, move. Come the dog, the Come bad dog. fencer. Hey, come on, boy. Hey.
you like it. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure you will. Sugarfoot, every other week on ABC. Adventure tonight over most of these stations. Okay, we're on, on guard here for the first category. <laughs> first names of famous people is worth $25. You want to suck yourself? Uh, that's business. I thought myself. All righty. The Prime Minister of the United Kingdom is Macmillan. What is his first name? Harold. Harold Macmillan. Right. <laughs> now, composers. It's worth $50. Famous composers. You'll take that one, too? Nice. Nutcracker Suite and Swan Lake are two of this Russian composer's most popular works. Who is he? Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky, right. Okay, now we're going to talk about famous rivers for $75. Rivers. <laughs> Which one? Mississippi. No, <laughs> you don't get to choose a river. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Understand the simple language of the animal 
put your card up? <laughs> You're past excited, huh? Well, don't pass out now. You're familiar with the letters in our scrambled main <coughs> game. All you have to do is unscramble and give us the first and last name of a famous personality in that trip around the world who any place of your choice will be yours along with that station wagon and all the other prices. You can have one guess and one guess only. So unscramble the letters and tell us who is the famous personality. Uh, get, get, could you give that to me again, please? Helen, and the last name you say? No, I, I'm, I'm sorry, that's not right. M-A-M-E-R-P. No, it is not, I am sorry. You didn't get them unscrambled in the right order, Mrs. Uh, Zetwak. Uh, but because we did choose your card today, and have the privilege of talking with you, we do have some nice gifts for you, okay? Bill, would you tell her about them? Right, Johnny. Well, Mrs. Zetwak, you've won this really beautiful Tangy train case completely filled with the famous Tangy cosmetics, including their newest lipstick, Tropicana Orange. And for the man in your life, a 14-carat gold-filled cross pen and pencil set from A.T. Croft. And for the whole family's enjoyment this summer, you'll love this down there in Louisiana, too, the new Amana Compact one-horsepower air conditioner that needs no special wiring and uses no more current than an electric iron. Made in the world-famous Amana colonies in Amana, Iowa. Although uh, you didn't win the big trip, you did win some nice gifts. How they sound, all right? <laughs> Eat the hall. Well, we hope you enjoy the gifts, and uh, they'll be coming down your way very soon. I understand you have three children and eight grandchildren, right? Well, you give them our best, will you? And thanks for writing us. Nice talking with you. Goodbye. Okay, tomorrow we make another phone call, so be sure and get your cards in. Bill, why don't you give them the address? Here it is, Johnny White, Box 249, ABC TV, New York 23, New York. Right after station identification, more of Johnny Carson, and do you trust your wife? Denise Darcel and Cliff Norton try their luck at charades at Mike Stokey's Pantomime Quiz tonight. Don't miss the fun on ABC Television Network.
Let's say, for instance, you go into a five and ten, you want to buy a tube of toothpaste. Yeah. And you see a big crowd, you hear a lot of laughing, so you walk over and you start to listen. And next thing you know, you're walking out of the store with a whole bag full of kitchen gadgets, but no toothpaste. <laughs> That's official. Bring you right in and sell you, huh? That's right. Adele, was John a pitch man when you, uh, when you married him? Yes, he was. Uh, let's see now, we've been uh, married 17 years. Uh-huh. And he's, yes, he he's a pitch man of 18, and uh, we... I guess we've been a pitch man all his life. Is that right? <laughs> you, have, you, have, you have a family? You have any children at home? Yes, we have two. Ah, boy and a girl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Expect more, do you? Uh, we'd like to have another one. <laughs> well, keep pitching. That's the only way to do it, I guess. John, how did, how did you meet Adele? Huh? Huh? A hard 
fit to follow. But seriously, relax for one minute. We'll play the game. But right now, I would like you gals to take a look at something right over here. Because this is the first time that you're going to see a really delicious, genuine ice cream pie that needs no freezing. It's uh, firm textured, cuts perfectly every time, keeps in the refrigerator, and you can make it tonight with Jell-O Instant Pudding. It's just as easy as this. All you need is one cup of milk, one pint of any flavor ice cream, and of course, one package of any flavor Jell-O Instant Pudding. Now you soften the uh, ice cream with the milk like we've already done here. This happens to be chocolate ice cream, but of course you can use any flavor that you go for. And then you simply add one package of Jell-O Instant Pudding, any one of the seven flavors that you like. Then you simply blend well and immediately pour into a, a pie shell or a graham cracker crust. You chill for about one hour in your refrigerator. Why don't you try it today? It's that simple. Sensational ice cream pie made in minutes with the fabulous magic of Jell-O Instant Pudding. We're going to talk about first names of famous people. You want to trust yourself or trust Adele on this one? I think I'll trust myself on this one. Okay, McKinley, a United States president. What was his first name? Uh, McKinley. William. William McKinley, McKinley. right. <laughs> okay, composers, famous composers. Music. Uh -huh. You want to take a shot? I'm trying. Rhapsody in Blue and Porgy and Bess are major works of this American composer. <laughs> Name him. Rhapsody in Blue, and Porgy and Bess. And George Gershwin. George Gershwin. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at him for a while. I just like his little size, George Gershwin. <laughs> How about famous rivers? Famous uh, rivers worth $75. I think I'll trust myself, George. One of the principal rivers of Europe forms the border between Switzerland and Germany. Name it. Uh, Switzerland and Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, forms the border between Switzerland and Germany.
other words, the countries of Europe not ruled by monarchs. Do you understand the question? Yes. Are you ready? Ready. Go. Uh, Helsinki. Uh, so, uh, countries of Europe. Yes. Uh, Switzerland. Uh, Germany. Okay, the 10 seconds is up. We'll be right back to you, Odin. Can we have the sound over here? Alan, can you hear me all right? I can, Jerry. All right, it's on Europe for $500. Here's the question. 22 countries of Europe are republics. Within 10 seconds after I say go, name as many as you can of the republics of Europe. In other words, the countries of Europe not ruled by monarchs. Do you understand the question? The 21 republics of Europe. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Go. Portugal, France, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Austria, Poland. Uh... I don't believe we'll have time to read all the 22 countries of Europe that are republics, but Bill, what is the score? Well, Johnny, Odin Niederkirchner and a good try had one correct. Dr. Alan Birkenfield had nine correct. Our champions again, the Birkenfield. <laughs>